Live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in New York City. This is theCUBE's coverage of Big Data NYC. This is our own event for five years now. We've been running it. Been at Hadoop World since 2010. It's our eighth year covering the Hadoop World, which has evolved into Strata Conference, Strata Hadoop, now called Strata Data. And of course, it's a bigger than just Strata. It's about big data in NYC. A lot of big players here inside the Cube, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and, and great guests. I'm John Furrier, the co-host this week with Jim Kobielus, who's the lead analyst on our big data at our Wikibon team. Our next guest is Yaron Haviv, who's with Aguazio. He's the founder and CTO. Hot startup here at the show, making a lot of waves on their new platform. Welcome uh, to theCUBE, good to see you again, congratulations. Yes, thanks, thanks very much. We're uh, happy to be here again. You're known in the CUBE community as the guy on Twitter who's always uh, pinging me and Dave and the team saying, hey, you know, you guys got to get that right. You really are one of the smartest <laughs> guys on, on the network in our community, you're super smart. Your team has got great uh, uh, tech chops. And in the middle of all that is the hottest market, which is cloud native, cloud native as it relates to the integration of how apps are being built, and essentially new ways of engineering around these solutions, not just repackaging old stuff, it's really about mm. putting things in a true cloud environment with an application development, with data at the center of it, you've got a whole complex platform you, you've introduced. So really, really want to dig into this. So before we get into some of my point, of course, I know Jim's got a ton of questions, mm. is give us an update on what's going on. So you guys got some news here at the yep. show. Let's get to that first. Right, so since the last time we spoke, we had the tons of news. Uh, we're making revenues, we have customers. Uh, we've just uh, recently GA'd. Uh, we recently got um, significant investment from uh, major investors. Uh, we raised about $33 million uh, recently uh, from companies like Verizon Ventures, uh, Bosch, you know, for IoT, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which is Dow Jones uh, and other properties, uh, Dell EMC, so uh, pretty broad. So customers, pretty much. Yeah, so that's the nice, <coughs> the interesting thing. Usually, you know, investors are sort of strategic investors, or partners, or potential buyers, but here, it's essentially our customers said it's so strategic to the business, uh, we want to... Well, let's talk about the GA of the product, just, just get into the, the, what's shipping, what's available, what's the general availability, what are you now offering? So, uh, Iguaz is trying to, you know, you alluded to cloud native and, and all that. Usually when you go to uh, air events like Strata and Big Data, it's nothing to do with cloud native, a lot of uh, hard labor, not really continuous development and integration. It's, it's like not continuous, Docker, yeah, it's yeah, not it's continuous con, hard yeah. work, okay? It's <laughs> continuous <laughs> hard work. And um, essentially what, what we did, uh, we created a data platform which is extremely fast and integrated. You know, it has all the different forms of, of state, streaming and events and, and documents and tables and, and all that uh, in a, into a very unique architecture. We won't dive into that uh, today. And on top of it, we've integrated uh, cloud services like Kubernetes and serverless functionality and others. So we, c we can essentially create a hybrid cloud. So some of our customers, they, they even uh, deploy portions as an OPEX-based uh, settings in the cloud, and some portions in the edge or in the enterprise deploy the software or even a prepackaged appliance. So we're the only ones that provide a, a full hybrid experience. Is this a SaaS product? So it's a software stack, and okay. it could be liver, delivered in three different options. One, if you, you don't want to mess with the hardware, you could just uh, rent it, and it's deployed in, uh, in Equinix facility. We have very strong partnerships with them uh, globally. And uh, if you want to have uh, something on-prem, you could get a software reference architecture. You go and deploy it. If you're a telco or an IoT player that wants a manufacturing facility, we have a, a very small 2U box, yeah. four servers, four GPUs, all, this ta all the analytics stack you could think of. Uh, you just put it in the factory instead of like two racks of a dupe. So you're not general purpose, you just whatever the, the, the customer wants to deploy the stack, their flexibility is on them. Yeah, no, it is an appliance. Solution? It is an appliance even on a, uh, when you deploy it on-prem. Uh, it's a bunch of Docker containers inside that you don't even touch them, you don't SSH to the machine. You have APIs and you have UIs, and that it's just like the cloud experience, when you go to Amazon, you don't open the kimono, you know, you just yeah. uh, <laughs> use it. Uh, so our experience, that's what we're, we're telling customers. No root access problems, no security problems. It's a hardened system. Give us servers, we'll deploy it, and you go through uh, consoles and UIs. So you don't and host API. anything for anyone? Uh, we host for uh, some customers, including... Uh, so you'll do whatever the customer was interested yes. in doing. <laughs> so you're flexible, okay. We let's just want to make money, yes. Well, let's get it. <laughs> I think you're going to do pretty good. Let's dig into the product. So on the GA, so here, 
uh, it's obviously the big data world. You mentioned you got this data layer, so le like a data uh, piece. So I got to ask you the question. Then. So, so pretend I'm an idiot for a second, right? Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Pretend, but, uh, <laughs> no, you're a smart um, guy. Okay. So, I what, smirked what over what here. What problem are you solving? So we'll just go this simple. I love what you're doing. <laughs> I assume you guys are super smart, which I can say you are. But what's the problem you're solving? What's so the for me? Okay, so there are two problems. One is the challenge everyone wants to transform. You know, there is this uh, digital transformation mantra, mm -hmm. and it means essentially two things. One is uh, I want to automate my operation environment so I can cut costs and be more competitive. The other one is I want to improve my customer engagement. You know, I want to uh, do mobile apps which are smarter, you know, get uh, more direct content to the user, get more targeted uh, functionality, et cetera. These are the two key challenges for every business, any industry, okay? So they go and they deploy a dupe and hive and, and all that uh, stuff, and it takes them two years to productize it. And then they get to the data science piece. And what, by the time they finish, they understand that this Hadoop thing can only do one thing, is queries and reporting and BI and data warehousing. How do you do actionable insights from that stuff? Okay, because actionable insights means I get information from my, the mobile app, and then I translate it into some action. I have to enrich the vectors, do machine learning, all that details. And then I need to respond. Hadoop doesn't know how to do it. So the first generation is people that uh, pulled a lot of stuff into data lake and started querying it and generating reports. And Low the boss cost said, data lake, basically. Was yes, the use and case. the boss said, okay, what am I going to do with this report? Is it generating any revenue to the business? No. The only revenue generation, if you You're take fired. this data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and they're not all fired, but now they're... Re well, they don't re get the budget they now need. Now they're I starting mean. to buy our stuff. So, uh, <laughs> and now the point is, okay, how can I put all this data and in the same time generate actions and, and also deal with the production a aspects of, I want to develop in a beta phase, I want to promote it into production. That's cloud native architectures, okay? Hadoop is not cloud. How do I take a, a Spark, Zeppelin, you know, a notebook, and I turn it into production? There's no way to do that. And by the way, <laughs> depending on which cloud you go to, they have a different mechanism elements for each yeah. cloud. So the cloud Azure. providers do address that because oh, they are no starting DevOps to package. That spans all the clouds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so cloud providers are starting to have their own offerings, which are all proprietary around. This is how you would, uh, you know, forget about HDFS, we'll have S3, and we'll have Redshift for you, and we'll have uh, Athena, and again, you'll start to consume that into a service. It still doesn't address the continuous analytics challenge that people have. And if you're looking at what we've done with, uh, with Grab, which is amazing, they started with using Amazon services, S3, Redshift, you know, Kinesis, all that stuff and it took them about two hours to generate insights. Okay, now the problem is they want to do uh, driver incentives in real time. So a driver, they want to incent the driver to go and make more rides or other things. So they have to analyze the event of the location of the driver, the event of uh, the location of the, the customers, and just and throw in uh, messages back based on analytics. So that's real time analytics. And that's not something they could do in- They got to build that from scratch right away. I mean, that, they can't do that with the existing. No, and, and Uber invested tons of energy around that and they don't get the same functionality. Another unique feature that they talk about in our PR is This that is for the use case you're talking about, this is the Grab, yes. which is the car. The Grab is sort of number oh, one oh, uh, ride sharing in Asia, yeah. which is the bigger than Uber in Asia, and they're using our platform. Uh, by the way, even Uber doesn't really use a dupe, they use MemSQL for that stuff, so it's not really using uh, open source and all that. Uh, but the, the point is, for example, with, with Uber, when, uh, when, you have a, uh, when they monetize the rides, they do it just based on demand, okay? And with uh, Grab, now what they do, because of the capability that we can intersect tons of data in real time, uh, they can also look at the weather. Was there a terror attack or something like that? They, wanna, they don't want to raise the yeah, price. A lot of other data points, could be traffic, yeah. it could they be- They don't want to raise the price if there was a, you know, uh, a problem, you know, and all the customers get aggregated. This is actually intersecting data in real time. And no one uh, today can do that in real time be beyond what we can do. Okay, a so lot of people have semantic problems with real time. They don't even know what they mean by real time. Yes. The data could be week old, but they can get it to them in real time. Yeah, but every decision, if you think, if you generalize line of yeah. down the problem, okay? And that's, uh, we have slides on that that I explain to uh, customers. Is, uh, every time I run analytics, I need to look at four types of data. The context, the event, okay, what happened, okay? Uh, the second type of data is the previous state. Like I have a car, was it up or down, or you know, what's the, what's the previous state of that uh, element? The third element is the time aggregation. Like what happened in the last hour? The average temperature, the average, you know, uh, ticker price for the stock, etc. Okay. And the uh, fourth thing is enriched data. Like I have a car ID. 
uh, but what's the make, what's the model, you know, who's yeah. driving it right now? That's secondary data. So every time I run a machine learning uh, task or any decision, every event decision, I have to uh, collect all those four types of data into one vector, it's called feature vector, mm -hmm. and take a decision on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you take Kafka, it's only the event part. Okay, yeah. you take MemSQL, it's only the state part. You take uh, Hadoop, it's only like historical stuff. How do you assemble and stitch a, a feature you vector? You're, you're talking part? about a complex machine learning pipeline, so clearly, the, the, the just learning, also the about prediction, hyper, yeah. and, and actions uh, based on just uh, dumb things, like the car broke and I need to send a garage. I don't need machine learning for that. Okay. So within your environment then, do you, uh, do you enable the machine, learn, machine learning models to execute across the different data platforms of which this hybrid environment is, is composed? And then do you aggregate the results of those models runs into some larger a yeah, model so that drives the real-time decision. So in, in our solution, everything is a document. So even a picture is a document with a lot of uh, things. So you can uh, essentially throw in a picture, run TensorFlow, it embed uh, more features into the document, and then query those features on another platform. So that's mm -hmm. really what makes this continuous analytics mm -hmm. extremely flexible. So that's what do we give customers. Uh, the first thing is simplicity. They can now build applications in, you know, we had a uh, tier one uh, automotive customer, uh, CIO coming, mm -hmm. uh, meeting us, said, you know what, I have a project, one year, I need to have hi hired dozens of people, it's hugely complex, so, uh, you know, tell us what's the use case, and we'll br build a prototype, okay? All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna one week, we gave him a uh. prototype, and he was amazed how in one week we created an application that analyzed all the streams from the data, from the cars, and that did the enrichment, did the machine learning, and provided the prediction. Well, we're going to have to come in and test you on this because I'm skeptical, <laughs> but here's why. Everyone is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, we'll get to that, but I mean, I'm, I'm probably not skeptical, but I kind of understand because the history is pretty clear. If you look at uh, some of the big uh, ideas out there like OpenStack, I mean, that thing just morphed into but a beast. Hadoop was a cost of ownership nightmare, as you mentioned early on. So mm -hmm. people have been conceptually correct on what they were trying to do, but trying to get it done was always hard. And then it mm -hmm. took a long time to kind of figure out the operational model. So how are you different, if I'm going to play the skeptic here, uh, you know, I've heard this before, how are you mm -hmm. different than say OpenStack or Hadoop cool. clusters, because that was a nightmare, cost of ownership, I couldn't get the time to value I needed, lost my budget, What? why aren't you the same? Okay, that's interesting. I don't think really you know, but I ran a lot of development for OpenStack uh, when I was in Mellanox and, uh, and Hadoop, so I, I right, patched so a lot of those. So do you uh, agree with what I said, that that was a problem? They're, they're extremely complex, yes. And I think uh, one of the, the things is first, uh, OpenStack tried to bite on, on too much, and it's sort of a huge tent. Everyone tries to push his, uh, push his agenda. Uh, OpenStack is still an infrastructure layer, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and also, Hadoop is sort of uh, something in between an infrastructure and an application layer, mm -hmm. but it was designed 10 years ago, where the problem that Hadoop tried to solve is how do you do web ranking, okay, on tons of batch data. And then the, the ecosystem evolved into real time and streaming and machine learning. And that A data warehouse alternative, yeah, whatever. So, so that doesn't fit the original model of batch processing, because if an event comes from the car or an IoT device and you have to uh, do something with it, you need a table with an index. You can't just go and build a huge parquet file. Now, okay. you know, th th you're talking about complexity. Oh, you know, that's why he's different. Go ahead. Okay, so, so what we've done uh, with our team, after knowing OpenStack and all those giant- <laughs> All Adobe the scar tissue. And all the scar tissues, and, and my role uh, was also working with all the cloud service providers, so I know their internal architecture, uh, and I worked on SAP HANA and Exadata and all those mm -hmm. things, so we learned from the bad uh, experiences said, let's uh, forget about the uh, sort of the lower layers, which is what OpenStack is trying to provide. Provide you infrastructure as a service. Uh, let's focus on the application and build from the application all the way to the flash and the CPU instruction set and and the uh, adapters and the networking. Okay, that's what different. So what we provide is an application and service experience. We don't provide the infrastructure. Uh, if you go uh, buy VMware, Nutanix, all those offerings. Uh, you get infrastructure, now you go and build with a dozen of DevOps guys, all the stack above. You go to Amazon, you get services. Just that they're not the most uh, optimized in terms of the implementation because they also have uh, dozens of independent uh, projects that mm -hmm. each one takes a VM and starts writing some. But if they're still good services, you got to put it together. Yeah, right. but, but also the way they implement, because in order for them to scale, is that they have a common layer based on VMs and then they're starting to build 
of the application, so it's inefficient. And also a lot of it is built on 10-year-old uh, baseline architecture. Uh, we've designed it for very modern architectures of parallel CPUs with 30 cores, you know, Flash and NVMe. Uh, so we've, we've avoided a lot of the, the hardware uh, challenges and serialization and just provide an abstraction layer pretty much like a cloud on, on top. Now in terms of abstraction layers in the cloud that, that, that are efficient and provide a, 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 a simple, simplification experience for developers. Serverless computing is, is up and coming. It's an important approach. Of course, we have the public clouds for, you know, from AWS and Google and IBM and Microsoft. There are a growing range of, of um, serverless computing frameworks <coughs> for prem-based deployment. I, th I believe you are behind one. Uh, and yes. can you talk about what you're doing at Iguazio on serverless frameworks for on-prem? Yeah, so, so first I'm uh, very active in uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation. I'm uh, one of the authors of, uh, CN of the serverless uh, uh, white paper, which tries to uh, normalize the definitions of all the vendors and, and come with a proposal for a uh, sort of interoperable standard. Uh, so I spend a lot of energy uh, on that because I, I, we, we don't want to lock customers to an API. What's unique, by the way, about our solution, we don't have a single proprietary API. We just emulate all the other guys' stuff. Uh, we have all the Amazon APIs for data services, like Kinesis, Dynamo, S3, et cetera. We have the open source APIs, like Kafka. And, uh, so also on the serverless, my agenda is trying to promote that, you know, if I'm writing to Azure or a AWS or Iguazio, I don't need to change my app. I can use any developer tools. Uh, so that's my, my effort there. And we recently, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we launched uh, our open source project, which is uh, sort of a second generation of something we had before uh, called Nucleo. <coughs> uh, it's designed for real time. How do you spell that? Nu uh, N U C A L I O. I even have the logo. It's got a nice slick here. <coughs> it's really fast because it's. Nucleo. Uh, so that's an open source project <coughs> that you guys yeah. are sponsoring, so all code out in the open. All the code is in the open, pretty cool. It has uh, a lot of uh, innovative ideas on how to do uh, stream processing and best, because the original uh, serverless functionality was designed around webhooks and HTTP. And even many of the open source uh, projects are really designed around HTTP I, serving. I, I have a question. Uh, I'm doing uh, research uh, for Wikibon on the area of serverless. In fact, we recently published a report on serverless. Um, and in terms of hybrid cloud environments, I'm not seeing yet any hybrid serverless clouds that involve public, you know, serverless like AWS Lambda and private on-prem deployment of serverless. Do you have any customers who are doing that or interesting in hybridizing <coughs> serverless across public of, and private? Of course, and we have uh, some patents I don't want to go into, but uh, the general idea is that what we've done in Nuclear is also the decoupling of the data mm -hmm. uh, from the computation, which means that things can sort of uh, be disjoint. Uh, you can run mm -hmm. a function in a Raspberry Pi and certain the data will be in a different place, and that's those things can sort of uh, move, okay? So the persistence has to happen outside the serverless environment, like in the application uh, Outside of the, fun of the function. The function uh, access the persistent layers through APIs, okay? okay. And how this uh, data persistency is uh, materialized, that's sort of a separate thing. So you can actually write the same function that will run against Kafka or Kinesis or yes. RabbitMQ or HTTP without modifying the function and uh, ad hoc, uh, through the what we call uh, function bindings, you define what's going to be the thing driving the data or storing the data. Mm -hmm. So I can actually write the same uh, function that does an ETL job from table one to table two. You don't need to put the table information in the function, right. which is not the, r the thing that Lambda does. And it's about 100 times faster than Lambda. We do 400,000 events per second uh, in Nucleo. Mm -hmm. So if you write your serverless code in Nucleo, it's faster than uh, writing it yourself because of all those low-level optimizations. You're on, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really yes. appreciate it. We want to do a deeper dive. Love to have you out in Palo Alto next time As you're, usual, yeah. you're in town. <laughs> uh, let us know when you're in Silicon Valley for sure. We'll make sure we get you on camera for multiple sessions. And more information, uh, reInvent. Go to reInvent, there. we're looking forward to seeing you there. Love the continuous yeah. analytics message. I think continuous integration is going through a massive renaissance right now. You're starting to see new approaches. Um, and I think things that, that you're doing is, is exactly along the lines of what the world wants, which is alternatives, innovation, and thanks for sharing on theCUBE. That's great. very great. This is thanks. a CUBE coverage of the hot startups here at uh, Big Data NYC, live coverage from New York after the short break. I'm John Furrier, Jim Kobielos after the short break.